So you look at this adaptation, I think one of the most interesting parts is the sports element of it. Like, I hate football movies, but I hate them because they're corny. Now, if I ever looked closely, I would see that probably it didn't look like anybody had ever played football before. But I also know that, like, in my opinion, if I were trying to adapt something or do a sports movie, probably the sports action is most difficult in basketball. That's upon reflecting over the last day. Because baseball, they're a bunch of ISOs, like, they're quick shots. Anybody can look like they're swinging a bat. You can make a bat noise and then pan to left field or a guy waiting to put the tag on somebody. In football, like, most people can run and tackle uh, but at basketball, it seems like there's probably extended action where people have to have real skills. And I know there was some training that went into like getting these actors, a lot of them not great basketball players, some adept, to look right on the screen. Yeah, it's actually funny. I um, My wife always says I'm the worst audience for sports movies. And I think if there are two worst audiences, it's probably athletes number one and sports writers number two. <laughs> because you just see like... The movie 42, just as an example, the Jackie Robinson movie, I, I can't watch it. Like, I, it makes me angry to watch a movie like that. Or, huh? or Marshall. I just hate those movies. Yeah. and Because you see every flaw and you know every storyline and you know. So this one's been interesting. Number one, they went hardcore boot camp with these guys. Like the guy who plays Michael Cooper, who's one of my favorite guys in this experience, is a guy named Delante D'Souza. And he's a guy from Maryland. He was a track and field runner in college. And I saw his audition tape with basketball. And it's, it was bad. Like, it's bad. He was not a good <laughs> And now he's been two years under hardcore basketball training, and he can legitimately play basketball. Um, also, a lot of these guys are actually uh, our athletes. Like, the guy who plays Kareem, Solomon Hughes, played center at Cal, then went on to play for the Globetrotters. Uh, Quincy Isaiah, who plays Magic, was a Division III uh, college football player. Even Delante was a track runner in college. Like, there are a lot of guys with basketball skills. And there's a football guy. There's a Cal guy, right? Because I saw your Zoom oh. that you posted. Jeff had a cool thing, if anybody check out his Instagram, where he talked to some of the actors that did the that, that were on uh, Winning Time. And, like, you were talking about Delante, who he couldn't even – was it him that, that was shooting left-handed or something? Yeah. Like, yes. Your, your coach was like, oh, we got a problem. He like, shows up and they didn't know he was lefty. Wrong hand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you also have a Cal former football player, wide receiver playing somebody. I thought all that stuff was very interesting. Like just not only can they play basketball and who's this coach, Adon something. He coached Steph Curry and a bunch of people. You had like a real deal coach coaching these guys up. Yeah, they definitely worked out. And the other thing is obviously they have a lot of doubles. So like there are scenes where Magic Johnson going to the hoop and dunking is in Quincy Isaiah. It was actually a basketball player who played at Mississippi Valley State, I think was his main uh, double, you know, and they do that a lot, which That's obviously you would do. Yeah, which you would do. So it looks very, very real. It's if, actually very authentic. If I'm Quincy, I'm like, fuck, I can't do this. Like, you need the double for this. Like, it's kind of insulting. Yeah. Like, Lower oh. the rims. Yeah, right. Exactly. They're like, it's a layup. We need the double. Yeah. Like, that's when you know you're bad. But I, I just think it's so interesting. Would you agree that basketball is the toughest one, or do you think there's another sport that's tougher to adapt? I think it's, I think in any major sports movie, when a guy doesn't know how to play baseball or play a sport, it's painfully obvious. Like uh, Timothy Robbins in Bo Durham is really, you know, he does not look like a pitcher at all. Great the movie's movie. good enough that you get by it. Great right. Movie. But yeah. great movie, but brutally bad. You know, and they're like, if you see a guy swinging a bat who does not know how to swing a bat, yeah, it's horrible. So I just think, I don't think one sport is particularly harder. I just think if you you know if they were lazy, like we, my son and I love watching the movie uh, just because it's so awful. Teen Wolf, you ever see Teen Wolf with Michael J. Fox? I actually haven't. Count me in the unlucky few. You need to watch it okay. because it's the worst. Michael J. Fox clearly has no athletic ability to speak of ever. <laughs> yeah. And watching it, it's just like, oh, my God. So when it's bad, it's bad. And then this, it's really, really good, I think. I love the backstory with uh, Larry Bird, that character. Yeah. Tell us what yeah. happened with Larry Bird and kind of that casting process. Well, it was supposed to be Bo Bird was going to be Larry Bird. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a huge get. Another guy I'd never heard of, by the way. Does that make me... Uh... Bo Burnham? So, no, I'm yeah. looking him up right now, dude. I'm the worst with this. Looking at his face, no idea who he is. Yeah, I had no idea who he was either. And um could have been, been Larry Bird. Everyone texted me and was like, they got Bo Burnham. And I'm like, oh, 
You know, like you know who Burn Yeah, Burn Burn is? yeah, he's an American comedian, Come actor, on, musician, singer, and filmmaker. Yeah. Okay, right. I didn't know who um, Jason Clark was. Uh, Jason Clark. Wow, you guys are totally. Oh, my no, kids. I'm bad with the names. Jason Clark was in uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Correct. He's the guy who's playing. He's playing Jerry West, and I think that's a great cast. I also think John C. Riley is a great cast. And I, at first, I think people are like a funny guy being Jerry Buss, but it makes a lot of sense. The more you learn about Jerry Buss, like in your book, the first word that came to mind, it was like a different brand of billionaire than Jack Kent Cooke, who was like seemed a little bit more maniacal. Like right. Jerry Buss was tacky. In, a, yes. in an endearing way. Like, in a late 70s way. Yeah, and I feel like John C. Riley is, is tacky. Like, and he tries to be tacky. Like, that's part of his game. I, I think so far, from what I've seen, it's been awesome. But tell me about Larry Bird, because I, I interrupted you there. Oh, no. So, um, so Sean, you know, he, he, when he saw the show was being made, he was like, oh, Larry Bird, because he, he's a writer as well. And years ago, he optioned a book written by Seth Davis. Uh, when March went mad, which was about bird magic and their college rivalry. And he optioned it and he wanted to write and he wanted to play bird. And he always, and he studied bird and studied bird and studied bird for a totally different role. That's so, good. so Bo Burnham drops out and they need a Larry bird. It's actually crazy. And this guy, they call his agent calls him and he's basically like, I've been waiting for this part my whole life. And he's, I'm not just saying this ridiculously good. Yeah. Like I've seen, and I've seen the first season I don't, there's no way Bo Burnham could have been better at Larry Bird than this guy. He's made to do this. He's so good. It's also really nice. The thing that's awesome, I, you touched on this, like these guys are so freaking happy to be doing this. Like they are. It's like, like the guy Delante I mentioned from Maryland, like a year ago he was flipping houses and now he's starring in an HBO series. It's, and there's one story after another, after another, after another of that. And when I see the commercial or the trailer and it's like Sally Field, and Quincy Isaiah mm. and Adrian Brody and Solomon Hughes. It's like a dream making TV show, not just for me, like as a writer who's having this crazy thing happen, but for all these young actors, like again, flipping houses on Tuesday, HBO series on a Wednesday. It's just awesome. It's cool. It's like an intersection of like, uh, you know, I've got this big resume and I'm acting next to somebody who, who took a shot and ended up uh, landing the gig of a lifetime. It's like this every man and it could be Sally Field too, but I, I wonder about the height thing, right? Because, like, that's something that actors do it all the time, like Tom Cruise. Oh, careful. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey. John, <laughs> who didn't like me talking about Tom Cruise? John Hamm's publicist. John Hamm's publicist did not like me talking about really? Tom Cruise. Wait, yeah. why? Well, because he apparently runs Hollywood. They're like, yeah, hey, that was great. Could we cut the Tom Cruise height thing? And that wasn't a thing that John participated in. Correct. That was all us. But out of respect for Tom Cruise, I'm not going to say how not tall he is, but he's not tall. And I've he wears it. like, okay, he said it. He said the, the quiet part loud. <laughs> so, so Tom Cruise wears these like platform shoes. I'm sure like if you're shorter, like you want to be around and the angles have to be right. And I'm sure you're now the reality is for the sake of like Pat Riley's tall. And yep. Adrian Brody, who I think is cast very well, not just because he looks like him. I think he'll do a really good job. Adrian Brody was in Succession recently, uh, right? That's him. You got yeah, it. Yeah, um, and I thought he was fantastic at like big, big dicking Logan. So he's going to be perfect at being Pat Riley. Um, yeah, he's but he's not six six or whatever Pat Riley is. So like, how are these people? How do you play with the angles and how do you put people in the right places? Have you been privy to some of those conversations? All right. So just keep in mind, I'm just a writer, so I don't want to be like pretend I'm like a super Hollywood insider. But yeah. I can tell you. So the interesting thing is like Solomon Hughes, a guy playing Kareem, is actually 6'10", like a legit that 6'10". Yeah. He played center at Cal. Yeah. But Quincy Isaiah, who plays Magic, is only 6'2"-ish, and Magic was 6'9". And part of Magic's, the whole thing about Magic is he's a big point guard entering the NBA. So I know one of the things they do is, and, and I was there, is he just wore these really high shoes at one point. Mm. So you wouldn't see the shoes, but you'd see the height. It would equal, kind of make the height disparity more manageable. And I just think also everything is relative. So if Pat Riley and Jason Siegel, I mean, excuse me, if Adrian Brody and Jason Siegel, who plays Paul Westhead, are the same height-ish uh, in real life, and they happen to be 6'1", but they're supposed to be 6'5 and 6'4", let's just say. It works. You wouldn't even notice the difference because yeah. they're the same height. So most of these guys, if two 6'1 basketball players are supposed to be 6'8", but they're both 6'1", 
it seems like everything is relative. You know? It's just so funny with um with with a sports thing like this where you know everybody knows height, everybody knows like what position guys played. Like there's another layer of this right. is like one of the most challenging things I could imagine doing, and it seems like you guys have stuck the landing. You being the one who who kind of birthed this project in your writing, but like the people that cast this thing, the whole thing. And I wonder when you pass that baton, how fucking scary is it? Because this is your baby. And now I assume a lot of the things we're talking about, you don't get a huge say in. Yeah, right. Uh, and I shouldn't. I kind of have this thing like, uh, I never wanted to be the writer. When this whole thing started, this ride began. Like I really, really, really didn't want to be the writer who's overhanging everything because I've, there are horror stories of the writer who overhangs that happens and, a lot, to, huh? and someone has to politely ask the writer to leave <laughs> or like, listen, man, we really respect you, but you know, you kind of need, if you could just, you know, maybe come less. And I, <laughs> I know it, that, and it's not my profession. And I kind of view it as like, I really do. I wrote the book and now it's theirs. Like I wrote the book, I'm responsible for the book and they're responsible for this. Adam McKay and Jim Hecht and Max Bornstein and all the writer, like this is their thing now. And they've been gracious times a thousand. Like Kevin Messick, who works with Adam McKay, has sent me every script. They sent me every episode. They let us be in the show. I've been to set about five times. Um, they've asked me a lot of questions about just the authenticity of different things. I'll get calls from Jim or from Kevin saying, do you think this is right? Does this make sense? And to speak to the authenticity, that really blew my mind. There was a, um, there was a moment, and this is how big of a geek I am too. Like there was, I was watching an episode. I forgot what team it was. But it had they were playing a team and they had all the bench guys wearing the warm-up jackets. And and during this time period, most NBA warm-up jackets had their the guy's name stitched into the back. Mm. And I was like, I watched this team walking off the court and I saw one name. I don't remember who it was anymore, but I saw one name and I was like, just being a nerd, I was like, I don't think that guy was on that team when this is taking place. And I looked it up on basketballreference.com and I was right. He wasn't on the team. I'm a loser. I'm a total loser. And uh, I texted Kevin Messick and he's like, oh man, that's awesome. Thank you. That's really good. Good to know this stuff. Like they are so hyper vigilant about being right. 